Once again, I have come to ramble, my friends. If the audio quality sounds a little bit off, it's because I put my mic cover on my phone and went to a secluded area. Something funky's going on with my regular equipment, but I wanted to make this video regardless. Even before recent controversies have come to light, I had thought that this year was a particularly weak one for Nintendo. Most of their output has been ports and remakes and familiar things. You know, the only really original titles being Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity and Animal Crossing New Horizons, with the rest being, you know, Xenoblade Remake, Mario Port Collection, Pikmin 3 Port. Not a lot of good output, but, you know, it's, it's a crazy year. What more could we expect? A lot of things were probably almost definitely held back. Maybe next year will be better. Who knows, but that's not the topic of this video. I think you know what the topic of this video is. It has to do with the Big House's recently cancelled Melee tournament. It has to do with the cancelled airing of a Splatoon 2 tournament. It has to do with the shutting down of a fundraiser done in honor of someone very dear to this community who took his own life and the fundraiser was done for organizations that are reaching out to help people struggling with those same issues. It has to do in small part with other nefarious practices like the recently introduced limited time strategy. Suffice it to say, Nintendo are doing a lot wrong right now. It had to do with the big house organizing a Super Smash Bros. Melee tournament using uh, an, an, an emulator. I don't know which one, probably Dolphin. But uh, they were using a, a program called Slippy that allows for GameCube games to be played online with rollback netcode and all that hoo-ha so that they could do it, you know, uh, socially distanced, quarantined, blah 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 you, you know why. If you haven't heard the story, Nintendo shut it down because... Because Nintendo just can't stand when people take their... Oh, what's the word? Obsolete software, I believe is the legal term. They hate when fans take software that legally, in the eyes of the law, they're allowed to emulate and modifying it to make the experience better. You know? Nintendo is technically in the right that they can shut down any sort of spectacle made of uh, their product without their permission, but come on, you Nintendo, you're not doing anything new with Melee. I'd be shocked if you have anything new to do with Melee in the future, and shutting down this tournament was just a bad call. It's not the worst thing you've ever done, it's pretty standard in terms of your old man shaking fist yelling at Cloud hatred of new things type antics. But then to also shut down, or, or not air rather, the finals to a recent Splatoon 2 tournament which you were hosting, whereby many of the top players put hashtag free melee in their names, you know, to stand in solidarity with, you know, competitive melee players. They probably should have expected some backlash, but that doesn't make it okay or excusable that Nintendo, you know, decided not to air the entire thing and claimed that it was due to, like, broadcasting issues or some bull hocus. Nintendo is actively trying to censor people who are bad-mouthing them, and it's like, you know, I I guess I get it, but at the same time, it's it, it only serves, you know, like, do you think people aren't going to react to that? I guess there are people out there who are defending Nintendo's actions here, but honestly, what, what real, what's the most damage that could be done to Nintendo? for either allowing the Splatoon players to stand in solidarity with the people Nintendo disagrees with, or conversely, to let those people who are, you know, playing a modified version of Melee, to just have fun. You know, they're not taking profits away from Nintendo, because Super Smash Bros. Melee is obsolete software, the GameCube is obsolete hardware, there, there is no way to, to play Melee socially distanced with the original hardware, which, by the way, released, like, uh, by next year, over 20 years ago. And Nintendo has a history with competitive Melee. Like, they used to just hate it outright, even when they were playing completely by the rules. It's a whole thing. I'm not big into the competitive Smash scene, or the competitive, really, any video game scene. But it doesn't take an expert to see that what's going on here just... It's very miserly and uncool of Nintendo. You know, Capcom, Sega... There are other video game companies who show that this sort of thing, fan projects, tributes, tournaments, etc., those, they allow those to happen and they do just fine. 
But Nintendo, they're they're so miserly is the word I used before. They're so they've got such a controlling grasp on it all, even when they won't do anything with it themselves. They don't organize melee tournaments. They don't throw these people a bone. They don't even provide good online for the Smash Brothers game they have going on currently. You know, that's a whole different topic that I don't really want to get into, but it's definitely it definitely has videos dedicated to it. I'm sure you can find a million. I've certainly watched a few. And with the cancellation of the Splatoon 2 tournament finals, it's the same story. It's more of Nintendo acting the fool. But then, with this, shutting down the uh, this fundraiser, I'm hazy on the details, but what it essentially is is somebody made a shell for Nintendo's Joy-Con controllers based off a joke that Etika had on his channel before he passed, God rest his soul. You know, Joy-Con boys, you know, with his color scheme and logo, with, you know, it was just ease with angles. Somebody made those and distributed them, and all funds, you know, for people who purchased them was going to the benefit of mental health organizations, mental health awareness organizations. It's a noble effort, and it's totally legal! You know, to make skins for a controller, third-party skins, it's... These sort of things are sold all the time in legitimate stores across the country, if not the world. And Nintendo put a stop to it. They cease and desist that, too. Like, they really thought it was more important that people don't buy custom Joy-Con skins than it is for, you know, this mental health organization to get funds, you know, and standing with in solidarity with people who miss this content creator who, by the way, is probably responsible for drumming up a lot of hype and getting a lot of younger people into Super Smash Bros. You know, starting all the way back with Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS. It's a big bunch of baloney, and it's... it's impossible to defend. And not impossible, you can defend anything, but it's foolish to defend. Now, does this mean that I'll never buy another Nintendo product again? Probably not. But at the same time, Nintendo hasn't really been making any products that I want to buy recently anyway. Nintendo has to make a change here. You know, I, I feel like Nintendo, as a company, probably sees itself as too big to fail. They've lost a lot of the humanity that led a lot of people to be fanatics of them in the first place. That was embodied in figureheads like Reggie fils and Satoru Iwata, who were very humane. There are a lot of stories of Iwata helping on the development of games, cutting his own modest salary when the company had lost a lot of shares, where it's typical Japanese business standard practice to just fire a lot of low-level employees. A lot of that has been lost with Nintendo. We don't hear or see much from their figureheads anymore. And when we do, it's them like making statements about the faultiness of their Joy-Con controllers. You know, their plans for the fiscal year and all that other blah -de blah business numbers, bull hocus. I'm not saying that they have to be silly, goofy, fun, childlike celebrities, essentially. But they can't- but they can't be strict, cold, all business, and also do this stuff that actively hurts their fan base. Nintendo might have a good 2021 in terms of software. There's evidence to suggest that they might be rolling out new Switch docks, Maybe even Virtual Console, or at least expanding the online service's classic libraries. People have also put forth the idea that all the games they held back that were initially planned for 2020 are done, and they're going to bolster out 2021 software lineup. Nintendo might have a bright 2021 on their hands in terms of just pure output. But the way they treat their fan bases and independent projects and tributes it's gotta stop, or it's gotta change. Because as of right now, they've got nothing. Next to nothing that, you know, the die-hard Nintendo fanboys can really latch on to. You know, all this, you know, they might have good output next year, they might not. And whether they do or they don't, all those die-hard fanboys, who, you know, would be foolish enough to defend these kind of actions, have. The only thing they have is the idea, the thought, the theory, that maybe next year is going to be great. And it's something that we've been hearing about the Switch since it started. 2017 was great and 2018 will be greater. Oops, 2018 isn't actually as good, but that only means that 2019 will be all the better. 
So 2019 wasn't as good as it could be, but it was definitely better than 2018. But that only means that 2020 is going to be the real, and then 2020 turned out to be what it was. And now people are saying the same thing about 2021. It's going to be the next 2017. It's going to be better than 2017. It's bull hocus. You got to take these things as they come. I enjoy Nintendo's games. I enjoy speculating about the video game release scene. But a lot of the time, the games that I enjoy don't really get released that often. Those of you who follow my gaming content probably know that I'm more so into obscure and niche titles that Nintendo will probably never bring back. And same goes for Sony, and same goes for Microsoft. Same goes for Sega, too. Very few games are being made that actually interest me, in particular. So I've got very little, you know, my, my horse in the race is like nothing. I'm just waiting for the surprise. I'm waiting to be delighted. That's why I follow this stuff. That's why I watch E3. That's why I watch the Game Awards. That's why I speculate about this stuff. It's just a small obsession I have, and I can't talk to anybody about it, so I made the channel. So I can make videos like this, talking to like-minded people, and hopefully entertaining them in the process with other stuff. Cute puppet skits, hoodly hoodly hoo. But this triple whammy in the last week of shutting down a Melee tournament, then shutting down a Splatoon 2 tournament because they stood in solidarity with the Melee tournament, and then putting a halt to a fundraiser for suicide prevention. It's just all too much, Nintendo. And that, and that isn't helped again by your scummy March 31st everything will cease to be produced strategy, or your terrible input for 2020, or your terrible online service. It's mostly terrible. Can you do better? Yes, of course you can. We all can. Everybody who's even good can be better. You used to be better than this. Not much better, but better. You're not on the level of EA or Tencent in the sense that you're like straight up abusive or anything. But Nintendo, you've got an act to clean up, man. You big business that I'm addressing like a person capable of change on a whim. But what do you guys think? Leave your comments below, yada yada, you get the drill, but honestly, earnestly. I enjoy the conversation, I enjoy seeing other people's perspectives, I hope that my perspective has lent something of value to yours. You know, the exchange of ideas is good and healthy and something that should be encouraged. So like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel if you aren't already, if you want more like this, and plenty more as well, especially the puppet stuff. You know you love the puppet stuff. And enjoy watching my patrons march down there. I'm gonna try doing a thing now where I do the end slate and the patron appreciation time at the same time. Maybe uh, diffuse some of the early abandoners. Not by much, because they wouldn't even get this far, but I digress. Uh, what do I say? Oh, here's what I say. If you would like to support my creative endeavors and receive benefits that range from getting your name in the credits of my videos to being immortalized in your very own talking sock, Sona, then consider donating to my Patreon for as little as $1 a month or as much as only $10 a month. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you the next time I see you.